Victoria 3 would not be a game that we all enjoy. In fact, let's say that Victoria 3 would not really exist without the success and the memes behind Victoria 2. Now, the memes aside, what really made Victoria 2 extremely playable was its modding community and multiple mods that absolutely changed the way that the game worked, gave it a ton of flavor, and just made it an absolutely enjoyable game to be playing. Now, one of these mods is the Victoria 2 Divergence, and Victoria 2 Divergence has made its appearance in Victoria 3 Divergence. <laughs> Essentially, they ported the mod over, and this is the first iteration that I could find. There is a little bit of a backstory to this. Apparently, there was a great German war that was lost, and then pretty much the Germans got their arses handed to them, and, well, the world looks a little bit different. I have to say the lore itself is a little bit schnapple doopy weak, because it doesn't explain a lot of the other stuff that happens around the world, right? Like the Ayunu having most of this area then uh, Jungaria being massive and just a lot of other stuff. We'll get into the map in a little bit of uh, time. But my point is that uh, this is an alternate history mod for Victoria 3. One of the first of its kind right now since the game's just been out, right? So give it a few months and I'm sure there's going to be a lot more alternate history mods considering the fact that it's just a lot of fun. At least for me is, you know, playing something different than the vanilla at the same time to see what goes on through the mind of the various creators that have created these mods. So let's check this map out first. First off, I have to say that I really like seeing the dual monarchy. <laughs> Essentially, they've merged the British and the French into one country, and Scotland is not a part of it, so Scotland's independent. They'll never take our freedom! The dual monarchy is the world's leading great power, as it should be. Now, despite this being the first iteration of the mod, I have to say they've done an amazing job and they've added a ton of flavor with it, including a lot of uh, descriptive stuff and localizations. So for the dual monarchy, you see here it says that they're ruled by the Plantagenet dynasty. The culture is Anglois, with Francophone and European heritage as their main traits. But apparently there's a rebellion that might be brewing, so... Uh, uh, suffice to say, the dual monarchy might uh, split apart in two separate entities eventually. Let's see. South from there, we also have Spain, which uh, has Morocco as a puppet, or Maracos, apparently. And then we also have Aragon, which has, for some reason, I believe in this uh, alternate history, branch of history, whatever you want to call it. What happened was Aragon and uh, Castile never unified, but Castile unified with Portugal and essentially made Spain with Portugal instead of making Spain with Aragon. So who knows? It's plausible. End of the day, if, uh, what was his, his name? Uh, Isabella and uh, Francisco, I forgot. Ferdinand, what was the name of the king, the Castilian? <laughs> okay, a quick Google check. Apparently Ferdinand of Aragon and Isabella of Castile. Yeah, I knew it was somewhere around there, okay? Just don't judge me, whatever. <laughs> The point is that Aragon uh, did not become a junior partner under Castile and they managed to retain in this alternate history their islands as well as the south tip of uh, the Italian peninsula and the northern bits of uh, North Africa. That's interesting. I actually feel like this is honestly very plausible. Like if they did not fall under a union with the Castilians, they probably would have retained their uh, independence and they likely would have expanded as well because they were one of the strongest nations in the Mediterranean. They had one of the largest fleets, by the way, and one of the uh, biggest trading conglomerates as well at the time. So Aragon may be an hour History in our timeline is a subnote in history, but maybe in a parallel universe out there somewhere, they might be ruling over all of Europe. Who's to say? Check out my Aragon video in the description below where we do exactly that in EU4. Anyway, let's get back to this video. <laughs> Burgundy is alive as well, so oh, we actually have the whole history, the whole history of Burgundy. Once swore fealty to the kings of France, but its entertaining of independence was always there. Philip of Burgundy stopped the entertaining of the notion and put into action whilst carving a great swathe of land, entitled himself Rex Burgundicum. So I'm guessing what happened is the Burgundian inheritance also did not happen. And this is also very, very plausible because if the Burgundian inheritance did not happen in our timeline, 
very likely we would have Burgundy today as a massive nation, maybe even larger than this, because at the time Burgundy was one of the biggest military powerhouses. I would say it even rivaled France, well, wouldn't say rivaled France, but maybe would have eventually rivaled France, militarily speaking, if it kept going down the same path it did. You know, a single battle and a single person dying in history can change the entire course of history end of the day. And that's likely what just happened with Charles. Who knows? Maybe it's time-jumping assassins that killed Charles of Burgundy. And uh, we're living in the bad timeline because of it. Nobody knows what happened. Maybe Burgundy was supposed to establish an intergalactic empire. And that never happened because he passed away, okay? That's all I'm saying here. But one thing is for sure though, like... Uh, <laughs> Whatever the outcome, Germany is gonna be disunited. Look at this bad boy here. We've got all of the German nation looking basically the same. I mean, it's not the exact same borders, but it's a cluster schnapple of German nations. That's what I'm trying to say here. We got Bavaria still being standardly big. Württemberg and Baden is... The South is pretty much not really changed. They only added Ulm and Augsburg and they've uh, divided Switzerland into four parts. Oh no, Switzerland exists. It just is not as big. We also have the three leagues, Basel and Freiburg. And it looks like Luneburg Hanover is a thing which doesn't even have the entirety of Hanover as well as uh, other areas because Prussia is not a thing. Instead, We've got Pol- Oh no, my bad, Prussia does exist. Prussia instead is a um, puppet of Poland. Okay, I see what's going on here. Prussia never stopped being a puppet of Poland. And Poland, as consequence, is massive. They are the leader of a union of free nations. I'm kidding, everybody else here is basically a subject of Poland. There's no freedom in this country, come on! Get your schnapps together, where do you think you are, huh? There you go, we got uh, Sloboda Ukraine host, Zaporozhye host, Uman Confederation, uh, and Smolensk and Lithuania under the Poles. That's cool. But it looks like the East is very different though. The Lord Novgorod the Great. Wow, let's see what this uh, little history here says. Republic has suffered a terrible, terrible, terrible. It's what happens when you are uh, when you're as handsome as me. I'm kidding. I'm, it's a joke. Come on. It's stop. Stop it. I know what you're gonna write in the comment. Please stop. Anyway, let's get back to this. Republic. So Lord Novgorod is a republic, and it has the word Lord in it, which makes it really cringe. It does have some puppets here. You got the Hungarian Confederation. Vyatkan Republic, Galish Principality. So I'm I'm assuming that Muscovy never unified Russia. That's what's going on here. And everybody here was still a subject of the Great Horde or the Golden Horde until it dissolved much later, I'm guessing, because Crimea, which is a Sunni Tatar country, and Astrakhan, which is also a Sunni Tatar country, exist. That's giving me massive Great Horde united and was still around for a lot longer than it did in our timeline. There you go, you still have Ta Kazan, Bashrikia, Akhtuba host, Don Riazan. Well, Don Riazan, I'm guessing, are Cossacks. Yeah, there you go. Don host is Cossacks, Orthodox. Riazan is Veliko Russian, and Donetsk host is also Cossacks. All of these guys are Cossacks, basically, culture-wise, at least. Actually, I want to check the cultures in the game, but I want to get a good look at every country first. Let's check Asia a little bit. We got the Jing Heavenly Kingdom, the Qing, Tibet, and Jungaria. Jungaria is essentially what's the descendant of the Mongols, I guess, and they did not collapse into a hundred small entities. That's what's going on. Curious to know how this is going to go in the north. So this is not, uh, this is decentralized powers. I'm assuming that Ainu and Jungaria are going to have an easy time colonizing all of this. Well, it depends on their legislation, I guess. Japanese Empire is around. Apparently, it's an unrecognized major power. Shogun Emperor Komei ascended to the uh, Chrysanthemum throne. So we have a Shogun Emperor. They just merged the two together. Okay, I see. And Australia was apparently colonized by the Chinese. Okay, well, most of it. What about the East Coast? Sorry, the West Coast. Burgundy colonized the West Coast of Australia. <laughs> oh, wait, Burgundy is a massive colonial empire. They got colonies over Papua, over Indonesia. Siam is a lot smaller as well. Cambodia taking the highlight in these lands, and Taungu also taking the highlight here. Whilst uh, India is not conquered by the Europeans, we have Vijayanagar as well as Madurai, Travancore, Mughal Empire, 
So yeah, this is, this is definitely plausible, I guess, depending on when the divergence happened in our timeline or in this timeline, better yet. We also got the uh, Persian Shiites here and the Turkmen Sunni. All right, so Persia is divided between the Timur Tash Empire. I'm guessing this is a sort of a Timurid Empire sort of thing. And then we also have the Persian Sheikh Bizin Empire as well as Kar Kila, which is also Persians. What is this? Shaki Khanat, Azerbaijan Shiite. Are there any Armenians around here? I don't see any Armenian countries. Damn. Ottomans still around. They are seventh great power apparently, but they're seen as a major power, not an actual great power for some reason. Now I'm guessing that reason has something to do with the fact that Venice owns most of Greece as well as Venice is... Okay, I was expecting that to be six. It's 16th. It's not that big of a great power. 8.5 million GDP. What's the GDP of these guys? Venice has almost the same GDP as uh, the Ottomans, man. Holy shit. Wow. Papal States is around. Savoy, so all of these small Italian countries. Valachia is apparently Currently an independent country as is Moldova and Hungary is pretty big it's bigger than Austria which has Danubian culture all right I see Belruk also exists what is this Bosnian Sunnis why are they in the south bit of Hungary I have so many questions right now same goes for this Serbia is independent I'm assuming all of these guys are independent no they're puppets they're puppet of Illyria wait what oh no I'm sorry my bad Illyria is a puppet. Serbia is a puppet of Illyria. Okay, and Illyria is what? They're Croatian Catholics, Serbia, Serbian Orthodox. And then we also have Montenegro. This didn't change apparently. No matter what timeline, Montenegro is still small, still same border size. Clearly the developers of this mod are from Montenegro. <laughs> I'm, get, I'm kidding. We, Albania is pretty big and it's an emirate as well. We also have Macedonia, which is apparently a Greek slash Bulgarian country, and it's Orthodox. All right, I see what's going on. So by the 1830s, the Ottoman Empire had descended to a state of near chaos. A brutal civil war emerged, and with the help of Aragon, we were able to prevail. Oh, so just six years prior to, well, around six years, I guess, prior to this start date, the Ottomans lost all of the Balkans, and that's why. I'm guessing the Venetians also took advantage of that and took the south tip. That's what happened. I see, I see. They intervened in Greece during the Ottoman Civil War, and that gave them control of the Greek heartlands. Yeah, okay, that makes exactly what I just said. True. Egypt's independent, and I'm guessing they're not as strong as in the base vanilla game is. Tunis is around as well, but they don't have the actual city of Tunis, so why are they calling themselves Tunis? This is just one of those mysteries of life nobody's ever going to be able to answer, essentially. Just like the question of why the schnapps is Bohemia, the fourth great power with 20 million GDP and 15 million population? What? <laughs> oh, okay. Holy schnapps, man. Scandinavia's third great power as well. What? All right. Okay. Never mind the uh, developers being Montenegrin. They're clearly Scandinavians. This mod was clearly made by some dude in his basement over in uh, Stockholm whilst eating those delicious cinnamon rolls that they have over there that I really want some right now. But let's look at the new world as well. We got Gran Colombia, Plantagenia. Oh, and Belgian Confederacy. Confederation. Confederation. Confederation this is what I said. I said confederation. All right, so Belgian Confederation Pantagenia are clearly former colonies of either the dual monarchy or Burgundy, from what I can assume. I'm guessing the dual monarchy. Maybe Belgian Confederation is actually from... Bur yes, it began as a colony of Burgundy. Oh, you guys cannot see because I'm literally in front of that. Uh, it, it was a colony of Burgundy, but broke free during the Great... Belgian Revolution. What about Plantagenia? Uh, they are in an age of industry and exploitation. Revolution reaction was new. Okay, yeah. So these guys are definitely at odds with each other. And I'm guessing Vinlandia is a former colony of Scandinavia that broke away as well. Yep, I am 100% correct on that as well. Like everything else. And we also have Ching Chu. Wait a second. Ching Chu. Yeah, Ching Chu here is a colony or in a defensive pact with Taiwan Tishu. Yeah, basically they're Chinese colonists, all right? That's what's going on. Kita Kaigan. What the hell is Kita Kaigan? It's a colony of Japan. Wow. Wow. All right. What about, what is this? Ronst. Ronst. I have no idea. These are the natives, I'm guessing. Yeah. They gotta be the natives. South America colonized, of course, by Spain. And we also have natives, as well as Burgundian colonies. Holy mother of God, that's a lot of stuff to take in right there. 
Not gonna lie, that actually is a lot to take in. All right, let's get into the game itself. It's only been like a thousand minutes and we haven't even launched the game. <laughs> I'm gonna click on Burgundy. It looks like the most interesting. It's the second great power after the dual monarchy anyway. All right, so let's see what we got here. So they've apparently added a lot of journal entries here. Holy mother of journal entries and a lot of uh, clickable stuff as well. Expand our colony in New Zealand. Expand our colony in Cape Veltvri. Where is that? Is that South Africa? It is South Africa. Wow. Budget wise. Oh my god. That's a massive budget right there. Let's see how much from uh, consumption taxes we... Oh, whoa. Whoa. Holy snaps. It's a lot of money, my boys. Look at that. Oh god. This country is overpowered. I know what I'm enjoying the most now, boys. 107,000 from day one if we wanted to. Alright, let's see our technologies here as well. Technology is actually identical to vanilla. I don't see any actual differences. Nope, not a single difference. How about buildings? Do we have any new buildings here? I am assuming no, considering the fact that, you know, there's no new technologies. Wait, did I see something here actually? Yun Gang Port. Alright, so this is buildable, I'm guessing, in a special province. That's a great monument, I assume. Let's check the culture map mode. That's what I'm really here for. So culture-wise, we do have Germans in these lands, but they're just being ruled over by other people. So we got the Poles ruling over the Balters, which are a Germanic sort of people, I'm guessing. Or maybe they're a Baltic people, I have no clue. Actually, we can click and find out, can't we? Let's see, Balters. Germanic speaking, German speaking. Yeah, they are Germans. There you go, like I said. I can smell the German Prussians or alternative Prussians from a mile away. I got an act for this, all right? German Prussians, we got Malo Russians, Belarusians, Cossacks, Veliko Russians, and North Russians. Wow, that's a lot of Russians right there. Tatars, there's a lot as well. And even more Tatars separated by Kazakhs. Wow. These Kazakhs, they're they're real uh how do you pronounce that word? Uh K U K it's <laughs> Don't want to get demonetized, you know, for saying the bad word. Yeah, pretty much the same regular cultures in uh, most of uh, Asia, though. Nothing unusual. I guess the only unusual thing would be the Chinese colonists and the uh, Javan colonists, even though this is a Burgundian colony in uh, Australia. For that matter, let's check what South America looks like. Afro-Frankish and Amazonian, Amazonian, Grenadan, Grenadan. Wow, okay. Mayan, Salvadorians, Plantagenian, which I'm guessing is the same as here. No, it's not. We have French, Angola, English, and Provençal. You know, I actually really like the way they did this. So I'm guessing what this is actually, what it's trying to represent is, you know, the slow process when two different cultures merge in together, like it happened with every other culture in uh, history, right? So for example, when you had the original Anglo-Saxons that got uh, assimilated, well, they mixed, they didn't get assimilated. They actually mixed in with the Normans. Uh, what happened was the Normans and the Anglo-Saxon languages, they mixed in together and they formed the English, modern English language, right? Which was a process that took a while. Initially, it was in the big cities and the areas where, you know, the Normans actually lived because the Normans were a minority and they only lived in the big cities if, and they were the leadership usually. And eventually that spread out to the rest of the country and you have modern English. And that's also why you have a ton of different accents, right? Because of the rate at which it spread the different areas and a lot of other stuff that influenced it. And now with this, after the unification of the two kingdoms here, the English and the French, Angola starts in the uh, French uh, and the English areas where the uh, actual capitals, former capitals were, so London and Paris, and it spreads around slowly. That's exactly what this is trying to illustrate here, right? Because you have Angola, a little bit in England, a little bit in France, but you still have the French and the English around. So um, two things can occur. Either they eventually, the whole country uh, standardizes and becomes Angola, or they break apart into multiple little countries. That also has been known to happen. Same thing here. Spanish is basically here between the Portuguese and the Castilian realms. And we have Castilian separate as well. And we have Galician separate and so on. I like that. I like to see them simulating proper cultural 
I don't know what word I'm looking for. Morphology, I guess that would be the word I'm looking for. The Balkans is fairly standard, basically the same like it is in modern times, really. We have uh, a lot more Greeks, apparently, in Trebizond, and that's about it. That's the only difference compared to vanilla. We do have Armenians, even though Armenia is not a country, and we also have a lot of Azerbaijani, Bedouins, Mashrikis. Yeah, these areas, either they didn't touch them or it's just the same, exactly the same. Let's see if we have any new legislation now. So we got the same type of government, same home affairs. Yeah, I'm not seeing any actual new legislation. They might have just changed some stuff with the legislation though. Let's see, does mercantilism give the same schnapps? It does. All right, they didn't change anything. I'm get. I'm assuming, I didn't fully check it, but I'm assuming they didn't change anything with the rest of the stuff here either. Wow, Burgundy starts with the armed forces and the petite bourgeoisie. How are we gonna make this a little bit better? Free party and the petite bourgeoisie. There you go, 70% government, contested government. And we actually can enact some legislation. Oh, oh, this one's gotta go. This one's definitely gotta go. Thank you very much. Same types of uh, production methods when it comes to the units. And I'm not actually seeing any new production methods when it comes to... Uh, the various buildings here, but I do believe that they will be adding stuff like that in the future. The mod is still very, very, very fresh. Honestly, I'm impressed with all the good work they've done with the cultures, like editing every single province like this to get a new type of culture, a new type of pops everywhere. It's it's not easy, guys, trust me. I have I used to do a bit of Viki2 modding a long, long time ago, and I can tell you it's very tedious. And I'm happy to see that they did this, right? Like, it, it must have taken them a long time just to do that alone, right? I'm gonna tag around a little bit, because I'm curious to see what other countries look like also. Let's see if they have any special formables or anything of the sorts. Because I did say I did see in the um, mod page that there are new formable nations. Looks like the Ottomans don't have any of that, though. But I did find my first uh, new formable here. Aragon, Italy, apparently, is formable by... Uh, you guessed it, Aragon, of course. Aside from this, they can also form Iberia, which is in the base game as well. I think it can be formed by the Philippines and Portugal, if I'm not mistaken. Now, that is an interesting concept. I do think that if the Aragonese kept the southern tip of uh, Italy and the, the islands as well, well, then they probably would have, at some point in history, tried to form some sort of Italian-based nation or a nation that has both of the peninsulas, I guess. Maybe even something close to the Western Roman Empire restoration. That would have been uh, that would have been super fun to see, honestly. But yeah, didn't happen. Sucks, tomato, potato, it is what it is. There is a lot more work to be done in this mod, to be fair, but um, I will be keeping an eye on it. And if you guys want me to basically play any country in here, let me know. Really curious to see what you guys think about this particular mod. You'll find a link to the mod in the description also. And if you want to see more videos like this, let me know. I'll be doing more mod reviews as well. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Until that time, check out this awesome Japan run. And I want to give a massive thank you to all of my patrons, channel members, and Twitch subscribers. I would not be able to do this without all your support. If anybody else would like to also support me, you will find the links in the description.